Mr. Palmdor to four months, three weeks, two days. Last year, Romanian director Christian Mungiu was the surprise winner of the Palm Door at the Cannes Film Festival with his movie Four Months, Three Weeks and Two Days. A low-budget production shot entirely in Romania and set against the grim landscape of that country's communist regime, it tells the story of a young pregnant student who, with the help of her friend, tries to get an illegal abortion. One year on, Mungiu was chosen to chair Europe Day at Cannes, intended to promote European cinema and held under the auspices of Culture Commissioner Vivian Redding and EU President Barroso. We do love films, <laughs> and please tell the Americans... At Cannes, Euronews arts reporter Fred Ponsar caught up with the director and talked with him about his acclaimed movie, his view of current European cinema and the difficulties facing the region's filmmakers. You won the Golden Palm last year. Was it the beginning of a long story for your movie? Uh, mostly because of the Palm Door, the film was released in a lot of territories. But it's important to say that the, the film had a huge impact during the Cannes Film Festival last year because of the press. They helped me very much to open with this film in, in lots of places. And I discovered that uh, the respect that there is everywhere in the world for this Palm Door is unbelievable. And a part of this respect was also for my person during this year. The problem really is with the films that don't have the chance to get an important award. And for these films we need to do something in terms of backing their distribution up. Because there is an audience for European films, there is an audience for small films, but uh, there isn't a big audience, there isn't a, a multiplex audience. So we need to help the people which are willing to support such films to make a small local distribution and to popularize the cultural diversity we all talk about. What do you think about the diversity of European movies? Do you see some standards or is it just an aggregation of different national cinematographies? Well, you, you, you can't really talk about standards. What, what, what standard in art? I mean, it's, it's very difficult to put it this way. You know, the only thing that would define European filmmaking is that it's not American, it's not mainstream. But apart from this, there are so many differences, not only among countries, but even among filmmakers belonging to the same territory. So the argument of such filmmaking is diversity, in, and it's that it offers an alternative. We don't have to fight the mainstream. The mainstream is going to be there all the time. But there are lots of people that want to have an alternative to mainstream. And this is where we come from. Medias, especially last year, talk about a new generation of young cineasts coming from Central and Eastern Europe. Is there a genuine reality behind this? Uh, what happens is that uh, very often the most interesting films uh, today belong to, to filmmakers that make their first or second film. They are still full of fresh ideas and they have some personal stories to tell. And the, system of, the systems of financing in Eastern Europe now allow such filmmakers to make their debut. And probably this is why you see a lot of films emerging from the region and especially from filmmakers which are, I don't know, under 40. Is it more difficult today to find money and produce a film? Or is it more difficult to release it? Well, honestly, it's not so complicated to find um, the budget of your film if you want to make a film below one million. And uh, it's also easy if you want to make this step and work with a big star and if you're in the position to work with a big star and make a big budget film. It's very difficult for films which are in between. And honestly, I think uh, it's more difficult today to release a European film in a foreign country than to produce it in a system of co-production. What are the main challenges for European filmmakers and European movies today to be more attractive and sold abroad? The most important thing to do and to remember for the European authors is that there's an audience and films are, are to be made for this audience. And we don't have to be so self-centered and say we're artists, we're just making films for ourselves. But we also need to, to help the education of people all around the world to understand and see such films. Because there are times when such films are not that easy to see. Um, this is not necessarily entertainment. The kind of European cinema also means that you are going to listen to a story about somebody's problem and this will help you solve your own problems. But it's not that easy to understand. 
Spune-mi dumneavoastră cât? 4.000 e bine? 4.500, Do you think that cinema still have a political influence today? Well, I, I think it has an influence. I don't think that it's possible to change the world uh, through film. I don't think this any longer. But I think it's possible to educate people and anyhow it's possible to bring people together and to make them understand that even if some of them live in South Africa or some others live in, I don't know, Taiwan or Asia, when they watch films, they would understand that we are not so different after all. And it's a way of communication through film which brings people together. And this is what is wonderful about cinema. In some countries in Europe, there are less and less screening rooms. What is the situation in Romania? Well, it's, it's honestly, it's, a, it's not a very good situation. And this is why I uh, decided last year after Cannes that I was in position to make a statement. And after the, after the Cannes Film Festival, I decided to release my film myself in Romania as a way of fighting against having so little theaters left. We have less than 50 theaters left in a country of 20 million. So it was really impossible for me to reach a wide audience in regular theaters. And therefore, I did something somehow very romantic. I organized a caravan pretty much like 100 years ago or 50 years ago, a caravan that toured Romania for 30 days, screening the film on a mobile projector in big cities that didn't have any, that don't have any uh, theater left. And the result was unbelievable. So it was that his film toured Romania before it was shown around the world. Christian Mugiu says how it was received there is one of his best memories connected with the movie. People crowded to see the film which was you know, crowded with people that went to see film as a novelty. Uh -huh. They haven't seen film in a theater for, I don't know, 25 years uh -huh. already. So they can see, wow, it's big, it's on yeah. big screen, it's, and it's so loud, and I can understand, yeah. Uh -huh.